Linda is Pat Sloan here. So let's start with fruitcake. <laughs> Seems a bit weird for August, right? Talking about fruitcake, but that is the name of this pattern. And okay, let me pick a really cute one. Look at this. Look how it turns out. So I have like six more to do. So I'm doing four cross and five down. So on my board here, I've got all the parts. There's one, two, three, four, five, six more, six more blocks. And then I will do that sashing, which is similar. I'm going to do sashing uh, and cornerstones exactly like this, and then put a blue piece in the middle. I have uh, for the backing, the blue pairs. That's my backing fabric because I just love that. Whoops, got the cord on, snag the cord. So, so that is going along super well. I mean, I'm just really, really happy with how that's going along. And it's so fresh and springy and fun. Uh, well, summery, I think it's summery and fun. Remember we had a debate whether those are persimmons or pears and the uh, designer, Brigitte Heitlins, mentions both in her description of this lazy afternoon fabric line. So who knows? Who knows what they are? <laughs> <laughs> now, I also, I want to tell you, I updated my gallery. So I'm going to just show you that on the computer. Let's go. To get to my gallery, come to I Love to Make Quilts. Here it is. It's my Quilt Along website. And at the top nav bar here is Pat's Quilt Gallery. Click that and you'll have a new window. So here is the gallery. And I have set it up with just some information at the top showing you my quilts sort of like this is now even, I have put a different picture, it's newer. It's, I've cleared out even more, given them away to charity. Here was the video where I was pulled everything into one room, which was about 800 quilts. Uh, and then how I stacked them in order to start going through them in order to give them to charity. Uh, so then, then I have the one here, the video where I donated my quilt to the Virginia Quilt Museum for their um, collection, which was such a big honor. So you can see this down here. And then below, I've got the galleries the, from certain years. So way back 2019 uh, and uh, older, <laughs> 2014 to 2010, etc. 2003, 2003 to 2003 to older. Um, so then below that is current. There's last two years, 2023. And I list the quilts. You've seen these from this year. This is what we've been making this year. The scissors, sweet childhood memories. I'm going to be showing you this one. I have it quilted now. I'm going to hang it up and show it to you. The Harrisonburg. And I list you to the patterns. All the way down to ones that you can come look. Here's our chicken salad we're going to be starting. So this isn't my quilt. This is Fat Quarter Shops. If I don't have a quilt yet to put in here, I put it blank. So I have to go get a picture of my crabby pillow uh, and then down here, some others, some future things. And so far I'm at about 52 projects for, um, for this year. Like last year was 94 projects of all sizes. As you see a big quilt to a little finish. So you might want to take a look. It's a lot of fun just to see for me anyways, <laughs> what I've been working on. So I tend to not be so good about updating that gallery. So I needed to spend about an hour and a half the other day to get it all updated. And it's, I still have a few pictures that I don't have to put in there, which I'll have to, to work on getting. <sighs> yeah, maintenance, maintenance. But it is neat to be able to look at your pictures and see them like that and see what quilts that you've made for the year. You can document, you know, who you gave them to, even if you just keep them in a folder on your computer um, or if you, you know, taking photos, real pictures, you can make a printed album or digital album even for the year of your quilts. I mean, I think that would be really cool. All right, I am going to tell you uh, the <laughs> So a couple of other things. First, it is uh, was dash cam day the other day, which our ambassador Carrie from Pennsylvania said we should share churn dash quilts. And well, the fifth, I think may have been on the weekend. So I thought, well, we'll just do it today because it really doesn't matter. But churn dash quilts, a churn dash is my favorite block. Here is one from one of our projects. 
and I just love that block. I think it's so versatile. It's exciting to make for me. I love it because it's easy. It doesn't take that long. Uh, and it's, it has a great impact because you could change out the fabrics in the middle, change out the corners to have square triangles to a different color than the strips. Anyways, share one of your churn dash quilts with us uh, in my community quilt along with Pat Sloan today. Can't wait to see them. <laughs> I want to go, I want to get my quilt, that one that I said was finished and quilted. I want to hang that up. So let me do that. The Sweet Childhood Memories. It is so nice to get the binding on it. It's my new my new thing as they come back in. We finished this this one uh, at the in the spring, early spring, uh, before we started festivals and fireworks. This was the one we did through the winter, and I'm just I just love it. I think I'm going to trade it out and hang it here on the other side in my room to get to see it. But I want to show you the quilting design, which is a geometric. So let me get that other camera. Oops. This geometric design is just so effective on the sampler. I love it so much. Here you can really see, look how it looks. Look at that grid. Isn't that cool? So my long armor loves geometrics and so she often uh, recommends them. And so I've been experimenting and doing more of them and I just love it. I think it turned out so darn cute. Now I do have another little clip that talks a bit about this little extra border I put on. So let me run that. Big benefit of this little extra piece that I put on a lot of quilts, this little tiny border, is that now when I'm doing this binding, I don't have to be fiddling really to get it to meet that point. It's got a space, so it does float a little bit. If I wanted, I could have trimmed this down so there would have been even less space, if that's a look that you want. But it just is so relaxing now to be able to have put on the binding and not have to worry about every single one of those points. So that extra border is just that just a little bit of saving grace I guess you might call it so that once you put your binding on you're not trying to have to hit it right on the money for those points plus once you know it's quilted if your quilt maybe wasn't totally square you can have now a little space to square up your quilt so that when it hangs it's straight you don't have one side you know you know half an inch longer than the other you can kind of use this to fix that um, and it just, I don't know, I just love doing it. It is something that you don't really notice either. It's not like people are looking at it going, oh, she put a little inner border on there uh, or a little outer border. I think it's just there, you know, and it's, be, be, it's part of the piece and works out really well. Uh, nice, right? It, if you haven't done it, try it for a quilt. Try it just for, for one quilt. So I want, to sh I want to talk about the giveaway for the 100,000 subscribers, <gasps> which is so exciting. So here's the quilt. And next week, not this week, because this is Friday, but next week we will be doing something. Because what I'm waiting for is YouTube. So YouTube has to validate that I hit 100,000, and then they send me an email and, or, and then it comes up on my dashboard for my channel that I can submit for a plaque. And so once I'm approved, then I will do the giveaway. So that's what's going on with that part. And once you think I forgot about it, because I didn't forget. So those of you who have not yet subscribed, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> you could be in the running. It's for anybody who's a subscriber, by the way. Yeah, some people got this weird thought that it's only like new subscribers. No, it's all subscribers. Why would I do just new people? No, 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 no. So now I want to, I want to show you a few things I got and then I am going to go to the part center because I got curious when I pulled all those parts out and I want to see what they look like up on the wall. So I need to sort of remove all this stuff and we'll take a look at some of those parts. So before we look at the uh, blocks from the part center, I pulled one of the bags so we can take a look inside of it. Before that, remember that we have an auction right now at the Virginia Quilt Museum, the Royal We. <laughs> I have two quilts that you can bid on, which all the funding goes to support the Virginia Quilt Museum, and you can own one of my quilts. <sighs> so let's take a look. I'm gonna take you to the auction page. 
Here is the auction website. This is my quilt right here, one of the two that you can bid on to own, and this all benefits the Virginia Quilt Museum. This is the antique quilt. Look at that. And here is a very contemporary piece of uh, quilted sculpture. It is so amazing. Uh, so let's see. When we come in, we hit to browse the items, and you're going to find a variety of things. This is a watercolor of the heritage ladies isn't that beautiful there's the antique quilt and you have smaller pieces like one by mimi dietrich who is a very famous quilt designer in maryland uh, there's a smaller cathedral window piece uh, you can see the number of bids here's my friend wendy shepherd she has a pillow uh a wall oh, yeah it's a wall hanging no what is that no it's a pillow it says a pillow on there there's some really interesting pieces like this Caesar's crown and there's the sculpture here's my flower pop this is the uh, first of mine uh, look at that look at this okay what is this it's incredible it's a piece like a, an art piece of art quilt with listen to the music that is so cool so if you don't have a lot of space but you want to donate there are these smaller pieces look at this one here so cool. There you can actually get, uh, bid on an experience, the historical Shenandoah Valley experience. You can have a private tour and tea. You can bid on that experience. These are so cool. And here's my second one, the Posy Wreath. And so once you're here, you can click and look at the quilt up close, the pro, you know, whatever it is you're bidding on, and it gives you all the details. There's the label. Yeah. So awesome, awesome. And so you can get out here. We've got one bid. So come on, somebody else bid on mine, two bids on my other one. Fun, fun, fun. So I hope you will go out there today and bid on a piece uh, and support the Virginia Quilt Museum. We need to keep our quilt museums going. There are lots of things there for any budget so that you can uh, contribute and keep our wonderful mu quilt museums going. All right, part center. Here we go. I think the best thing to do is just unload. Let me just show you what's in here. I'm knocking stuff over. So there's lots of small things. You know, things that you make, sometimes you cut them and there's going to be an extra, so you just, you know, keep keep it because you can't use it. Hasker triangles that maybe didn't work. Uh, and now I had some more little houses. These I know were from my book. Uh, the holiday hoopla book in the one quilt has the little houses all around it. This was from that. These are ones I ended up not using. I have uh, carrots from carrot parts. I was testing out and went with a different sort of unit. So I have those. Uh, and I'm not going to show every... It's kind of be impossible to open up every little thing, but I'm going to try to move a little bit quickly because I'd like to put some up on the wall. These are two panels that were part of like a baby quilt project. And I just think they're so darn sweet, the sloths and the flamingos. So they would be neat. They'd have to be cut apart. Okay, I've got some windowy blocks. This was from my birdsong quilt. The big, uh, the big panel and around that. Got a regular nine patch there. Okay, here's something a little bit bigger, some other smaller parts. Uh, this was from Leftovers, from one of the Stronger Together quilts. Here's a block, <coughs> two of them, two house blocks that I did for Be My Neighbor in a different colorway because at one point I thought, well, I'd make a second one, but you know, life was doing other things. So that didn't happen. So I just have two blocks. Now you can see these colors are all kind of similar. They're all in these kind of summery, sherberty colors, oranges, um, pinky reds, these light greens, you know, nothing. I don't remember what that was. I do not remember. Here's a great big uh, pineapple block. See, there's a big pineapple block that didn't get, I think, I think it may have just been a test just to do one block. And I've got a bunch of half square triangles. Here's another star. I just put a border around it. But you can see that the colors here are all really good. There's some other big blocks from a project that didn't get used. Now that is Christmas fabric. So basically that needs to come out. 
I don't know, maybe it could stay in because it's still got kind of the same feel, the same vibe. See more blocks that just didn't get, are these house blocks? These are house blocks. There we go. Have to get, they were house blocks with a lower unit area. They just didn't work out. The fabrics, the, the red one's better. You can kind of see the house. Yeah, I mean, I, I forgot that's what those were. Um, here's a kitty. Here's tops of tulips, some tulip tops. You know, they could get a bottom and then just be a full tulip again. They could grow up to be a full tulip. And then lots of small things like, oh, look how precious this is. A little shoe fly block. And then just lots of head square triangles, lots and lots. But they're all in this colorway. There is a hexagon that could be applique down onto a background. Um, and then another handful of pinks. This was part of a project. Oh, the cutoff from the, yeah, the one um, quilt that has the sayings that I did. Those were cut off from that. Okay, and here's some other that were cut. And it's not, you know, I think maybe I just didn't use those. Just super good colors. Ah, oh, the tomatoes. Oh, there's a canning jar. Look at that. I forgot about the canning jar. Okay. Let me just go now and put some of these up on the design wall so you can get a feel for what the effect is. Here are most of the big blocks. I did not put those panels up. I didn't put the carrot parts up there yet, but they're all the bigger blocks down to some of the smaller ones. And I've just placed them around, you know, not any particular thing. Like here's the tulips. Like to me, they should get a stem and some leaves. So they would really look like tulips. So the canning jar might not be there and be somewhere else and just they would take up that space. So now what I'm going to do is take some of the next smaller groupings and sort of sprinkle them through the through the quilt. Now I added in a few more blocks. You can see here a piece block, the little houses up here are some blocks I added in in here up above the tulip down right above this house. Uh, those were there. Added a few little half square triangles. These blocks over here, the other house, the other house. So it's more filled in. It's so cool. So, so cool. What are you noticing? Pop a blue, plop a blue, plop. <laughs> pop, 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 blue, blue, blue. That's kind of interesting. That means if I want to keep those blues in there, I need to do switch out something up here that has some blue. So what did I do? I went and found some half square triangles here and I just made them so that they all came together in the middle. So the half square triangles rotated them so they had some blue. There's a pop of blue there, uh, a little pop of blue down here now. And I switched the block that was up there to be just over here for color. You know, I still think that it needs to have the stems, some stems and leaves for those tulips if they were going to be in here. This would need some half square triangles and basically there's little spacers in places, but that's a good group of them. What's left on the table. Here we go. This is what I have left. Lots of smaller pieces. There are these great big half square triangles. These are, these are really big. So they probably wouldn't go in this project. The carrot parts, you know, a bunch of smaller, things. I'd, I'd like to try to fit that one in. I'm sure I can. There's some quarter square triangles, a whole stack of those, a bunch more half square triangles. And so once again, take a look. See from a distance. Wow. So fun. So fun. So I will take a picture of this and put it on my website today. So you can go see it on the article today and uh, take a look. Now, would I leave these exactly like this? No, no, I would move some things around. Those funky house blocks that don't have enough definition, I would, whoops, whoops, I would want to put uh, some border around them, like a little cream border or something, just so that I don't lose them entirely. They're just too um, soft. You know, they're too low contrast. The, the block does not stand out. And I don't want to, if I'm going to put it in there, I don't want to get it lost. But there's a lot of house blocks. So it would be really cool maybe to put a border on this that says home sweet home. Something like that would be fun. An applique border afterwards. Uh, I think that would be super cute. Of course, I want to do those stems for the tulips. So what, so what do I do next? <laughs> well, you know I have like three critter quilts, at least after the one I've been showing you this week. 
that's done. Um, but I need, you know, I need to have a little break between those so that I don't get stuck, you know, and do the same thing for them. So this would be kind of fun to work on for a little bit uh, in between. So I'm thinking of emptying one of the drawers over here, or just shuffling around so I can lay those blocks in there, or at least in one of my bins because they were just so crumpled up, and then work on that. I won't probably do as complicated a layout. I will probably just sew things kind of myself like and without drawing it all out but who knows maybe I'll draw it out. But I do want to show you something because there's only a few of these left and I was thinking that some of these would be really cute in here particularly there's this um, gray with pink polka dots for some some place in here like some spacer like use that all up. Let me show these real quick. This is a line of dots from Tilda, and she has a lot of different dots, but this one you can buy this little bundle. And they are, I wanna say a fat eighth. Yeah, no, they're fat quarters. They're fat quarters, awesome. So they're fat quarters, and there's pink, and a couple of these you can still get in yardage. Uh, that gray, that's another good one. The green, the light blue, the navy this blue this would be a good blue to put some blue in there let me and then pinks that kind of pink peachy pink here a gold what does this blue look like up there that might be another one that's got my ladder there so I don't fall on my butt so look here like a little blue something I, I don't know maybe back to that one with the pink might be better this one but I'm thinking that you know you just I use those as strips and spacers and things, and so that helps tie it around. And then a bunch of those little half square triangles that I showed you on the table are still left. That would be so fun. All right, my friend. <laughs> I hope you will bid on my quilts, or at least maybe not mine, but you will bid on one of the quilts at the Virginia Quilt Museum, and so they can go home and live with you, and you can enjoy them and know that you help the museum. So I love you. Thank you for being here in the Sloan Zone. I will see you online.